You're listening to the really useful podcast. It is the tech podcast for technophobes. My name is Christian Corley, and this week I'm joined by Ben Stegner. How are you doing, Ben? Hello, I'm doing well, Christian. Excellent. Good to be with you again. Yes, we are gathered here, dear listener, to discuss with you the ways that you can make Windows feel more like home. Um, it's tweaks, tricks, customizations, nothing complicated, but things that will make you just feel unique and personalized and very much you. There's so many ways you can personalize Windows. There is no way we will be able to get through all of them. We're going to give you a, give it a go, though, uh, in getting through as many as possible. Now, we all have our favorite ways of customizing Windows, I think. Ben, I know you've got some. I've got one which I've been doing for years, and I've got to get it shared now because it's it's almost become part of me. It's the thing that I do whenever I go to a computer, and it isn't just on Windows. If it, if it will work on another desktop, I will do it on another desktop. And I've been doing this since at least 2003, probably before, and I was even doing it on 4.3 dimension uh, laptop, um, not even laptop, on displays, old okay. style standard um, ratio displays, as well as on widescreen displays. It works much better on widescreen. And that is moving the start, um, the taskbar, I should say, from the bottom of the screen to the left side of the screen. That gives you, on widescreen in particular, it gives you extra screen real estate. It also moves the start button to the top left corner which i find far more convenient now the fact that windows now syncs your syncs your settings to whatever computer you sign into and has done since say windows 8 sort of time i've forgotten until very recently that windows comes with the taskbar at the bottom and because i've been using it like this for 15 plus years with a taskbar up the left hand side but it really does make a really good difference especially if you then add in auto hide so basically, you just push to the left, get your start menu, open whatever you need, access your links on your taskbar, move your mouse away, and it's gone. And you just get that extra bit of space that is, I find really important. So that is my, that, I mean, that is my best favorite Windows customization. You can have all the backgrounds that you need, and wallpapers and screensavers, and you know, flashy widgets and things like that, all things that we may be talking about. But just that taskbar up the side on auto hide works for me every time. It's interesting that you say that because I've like through college and stuff when I would see my friends' computers all the time or when I, when I was working and walking around seeing people's um, desks in the office, you know, I, I would see people that had their taskbar or their dock on the side. And I've I've never done that. Um, I've always had it at the bottom probably just because that's what I'm used to. Mm -hmm. I do auto hide it, though, just for the screen space. Yeah. And I've I've read articles or seen people talk about before that if you have it on the, the side, it's like easier on your wrist or whatever. It's easier to move your mouse to the left or right than up or down. Mm -hmm. So I've thought about trying it before, but it's one of those things where I'm just so used to um, – having it be at the bottom that I just stick with that. I mean, most of the time for the start button, I, I hit the start key and then start typing to search. So I try not to have to mouse down there too often, but it is one of those things I'd like to try. It's just the same thing. You get, you get stuck in your way and it just feels weird to switch. Yeah, it, it is strange to switch, but you, you do get used to it quite quickly, I found. And also, I mean, I have some I have some Linux cred points as well. So I just want to point out that I use the GNOME desktop most of the time and uh, on Ubuntu, so the, basically the, the dock is in the same place, so it it all works out for me. It's perfect for me, basically, doing it on Windows the same way as I do it on Linux, which I have to use both of for work purposes. Hey, what can I say? Yeah. So, um, what about you, Ben? Have you got any favorite Windows tweaks? Well, I would say off the top of my head, the one that's probably my overall favorite is more. It's a third party script it's not really a windows built-in tweak but um, i've been using for years um an auto hotkey script called autocorrect mm -hmm. um it's really just a simple like system-wide autocorrect so um it obviously can't correct everything but it has like thousands of common mistakes you know like spelling achieve with the i and the e reverse and stuff like that or an extra o and long or whatever um that as you're typing if you make one of those mistakes it immediately fixes it for you pretty much without you noticing. So does this um, work across the OS, across every yes. app? Yeah, Auto Hotkey is um, like a – you can use it to write your own scripts. So you could do anything with it from remapping to say, you know, when I hit the A key, type the P key, or <laughs> writing really complex 
you know, when I hit the, when I hit control, whatever, run this script that opens up my web browser and then types in this address and then right. waits five seconds and then clicks like you can you can do a lot with it. Um, but this script just basically watches for for typos and then fixes them. Um, and it's all customizable too. So that there's an easy place to add your own fixes or you can add like shortcuts. Like the one I always use is that I type the at symbol twice to expand to my email address because how often do you type your email address when you're sure. logging into sites and stuff like that? So that's my favorite uh, tip just because it saves so much time fixing stupid typos that you make all the time. Good suggestions. Um, now, one of the most common ways of customizing Windows is to set a desktop background and you can do that easily enough in windows 10 um, by opening the settings which you press the windows key and i to open then you click on personalization and then you have options to alter the backgrounds set your colors set a lock screen background even choose some of the windows themes that uh, are suggested and can be uh, upgraded in the windows store so these are things that are built into windows that are easily easily changed i'm interested to know ben what is on your desktop at the moment desktop background at the moment. right now so i have three monitors that i use and i have a giant folder of uh, wallpapers that i just collect over time like whenever mm -hmm. i like play a new video game or i like think about some piece of art or something i'll search for it and then just try to find a cool wallpaper so i have uh, several hundred uh, wallpapers so right now on my left monitor i have a persona 5 background on my middle monitor, I have a background from uh, Zelda Majora's Mask. And then on my right background, I have a Mario Mushroom background made out of all kinds of different characters and symbols from the Mario universe. So I have a lot of different ones, too. I have ones that are just like minimalist art, um, something from a movie, things like that. So mine change every 10 minutes. Wow. Okay. Um, I just have one display. It folds okay. up into the keyboard, and I put the computer away every night. So I don't have that whole. I'm, I'm slightly jealous, um, slightly envious um, of you having three displays, but I really don't have anywhere to put three displays. Uh, but my desktop is a theme called Cosmic Beauty, which is a selection of um, spacey images. Oh, okay, yeah, those make for really good yeah. uh, images. It kind of reminds me, like a lot of the. Um the default wallpapers on, on Mac OS, I think are really pretty that way, especially on like the high res screen, mm -hmm. all the little like particles coming off of the planet or the star or whatever look really neat yeah. space background. Yeah. That makes for good background material. Yeah, it is. I mean, a few weeks ago I signed in at my dad's computer and I'd signed into it previously and I was surprised to find, um, one of my old desktop backgrounds was there for about 30 seconds, which was an old, um, Led Zeppelin album cover. Um, oh okay I'm a big led zeppelin fan so that wasn't a surprise but it it was a surprise to see it there um <laughs> so um that was the it, it was nice to see basically it, it was really nice to see in fact because uh I'd, I'd forgotten i'd even had it but uh yeah it's 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 um th th this new um space thing is um I've, I've just kind of just got into having like rotating backgrounds basically that change on their own it's it's a kind of a new concept for me but uh yeah i'm enjoying it so far yeah, I used to, I've honestly been doing it for years. Like, I, I don't know why. I guess when I like first got my uh, laptop back in college, I was like, okay, I'm going to just come up with a bunch of cool backgrounds, and I really should go through and prune them because there's a couple that are, like, lower res or just not that great. Um, but I just kind of add to it and just have a big pool. And it's just it's kind of just fun every once in a while to hit the shortcut to show your desktop and then just see what's there and enjoy the, the different art. Yeah, I like it more than having to. I, I like that more than changing your image all the time. I with my lock screen, I do that. I, I I set one image and leave it on for a month or whatever, and then change it when I feel like I need something fresh. So yeah, one of the a couple of the other um, things that I like to do for customization, uh, one of them is to reassign mouse buttons. I find that really useful. So um, I used to have a Logitech MX Master mouse, which has a bunch of extra buttons. And now I have a Logitech gaming mouse, which of course has some extra buttons too. So mm -hmm. um, a lot of those extra buttons are meant for assigning things in games. But if you download the software uh, for the from the mouse manufacturer, it doesn't have to be used for gaming. So uh, some of the stuff I like to do is if you have a, a scroll wheel that tilts left and right, it's not super useful to horizontally scroll. Most of the time you don't need to do that. And when you do, you can just hold down shift and scroll your mouse wheel. So what I like to do is tilt the, the scroll wheel left to copy 
and then tilt the scroll wheel to the right to paste. Mm -hmm. So that way, if you're just using your mouse, you don't have to reach over to the keyboard or whatever. Um, I also have a button on top of my mouse that I think is meant for change. I forget what this button's for. Um, I think it's, it's customizable, but I forget what the default purpose is. But I have it just set to play, pause, music. So if I'm getting up from my desk, I can just hit that button and walk away. Um, there's also a button on my mouse that's meant for changing like the DPI from when you zoom in with like a sniper rifle in a game or something. Right. But I have that set to just control S with, because I, I save things all the time because I'm worried about something crashing and losing a bunch of work. So I constantly am saving stuff. Um, yeah. So that's a couple of the, of the ways I do uh, with the mouse, just for the shortcuts you hit all the time. I mean, the keyboard's obviously fast, but just having that one click button where you don't have to hunt for it if your finger's not already there is, is pretty convenient. You've given us a, a, two examples of kind of like shortcut tweaky tools that you use there that make, do, do, do they really make life easier and do they take a lot of setting up or not? Um, I would say they make things easier. I mean, anything for me, like when I do this stuff like a hundred times a day, like copy and paste, um, it's, it, you know, you save a second every time, but then over the course of the day, that, that adds up. So I don't think it's really too difficult to set up. I mean, if you have a, a major, a mouse from a major company, um, there's probably some kind of software to go with it that's free. And it's pretty easy. I mean, you just, it shows you a picture of your mouse and you just click on the button you want to change. And there's a list you can pick from stuff like play pause is like an action. But if they're, if the, the action you want it to take isn't in the list, you can assign your own key combination or whatever. So um, I wouldn't say that that's too difficult to set up now. Now, as of the beginning of 2020, 29.7% um, of computers in the world, Windows computers in the world, were running Windows 7. Okay, so that's an operating system that is over 10 years old. And that accounts for something like 450 million machines, which are probably installed in public buildings or in um, publicly funded organizations. Now, if you are stuck with using a Windows 7 machine, you're probably quite happy because it is a popular operating system. What if you're using Windows 10 and you want it to look like Windows 7? Well, there are some options. There are three very cool tools. One's called Start is Back Plus Plus, which restores the look of the Windows 7 Start menu. There is Start 10 by Stardoc, who, which also restores the Windows 7 feel to the Windows 10 Start menu. And um, Start Menu Reviver takes things in the other direction and just completely overhauls the Windows 10 menu unless you customize it how you like. The idea of Windows 7 tweaks for Windows 10 is intriguing. Windows 7 had a really cool feature that I liked and used a lot, which was the desktop gadgets or widgets that you could have. So it came in very useful for me when I first, um, in 2010, 10 years ago, I went full-time self-employed um, writing for websites like Make Use Of and many others. And... Not so many nowadays, of course. And it, I found it useful to have a clock, that sh different clocks on the desktop, which told me what time it was where the people that I worked with were based. And you could do that with the, um, the gadgets in Windows 10. You could just stick a clock on the desktop and set a specific time zone for it. Um, you could also look at um, the CPU usage. You could um, have a notepad. You could have desktop fe RSS feeds and things like that. Uh, you, those features aren't in Windows 10, but if you use a tool called uh, Windows Desktop Gadgets, or you might use a Gadget Pack or Widgets HD. There's three of them. Um, you can restore those now abandoned desktop gadgets and start using them again. And the vulnerabilities that caused Microsoft to abandon them, or so they say, um, they've been all been fixed. So it, yeah, it's, it's really, um, they, they will run in Windows 10 and they run just as well. It's nice to have them. I tried them, I, I don't have them at the moment, but I did um, reinstall them and play with them for, had, had them running for a good six weeks uh, before a system crash uh, not so long ago. So it's, um, yeah, they, they do the job still, desktop widgets. Yeah, I'll take a look at those. I remember them being in Windows 7, but I didn't really take advantage of them too much. Um, I had heard that Microsoft got rid of them because there were some security issues or whatever, but um, I, te I tend to like a clean desktop, like because yeah. of the wallpapers we were talking about. I don't like to have a ton of icons on my desktop. I see it as kind of like a I'm the same. Do you know space. what? I have six icons and one of them, one, two, three, four, five. I have seven icons and one of them is a recycle bin. Yeah, I have too many right now, but it's all, it's all stuff that I need to like deal with and move somewhere else. But I'm the same way. And I think looking at the, the, the screenshots of, of the, the tools that revive them, they definitely, as Windows 10 has kind of evolved into its own look, I don't think that they, they kind of look dated. Like they look like they belong on Windows 7, but still good to try. Um, 
I, I think they're useful. I for the clock, I have the same thing on the um, the Windows 10 clock. You can click um, into the settings and you can add two additional clocks mm -hmm. to whatever time zone you want. So I have UTC for that, so I can check that quickly without having to Google it or whatever. I don't do that anymore. I try and do it mentally. It doesn't always work, but I feel me I feel too. Like... It's really not that difficult. Yeah. It's more. It's more when England's time is not the same as UTC that messes me up because it is and then it isn't and then our daylight savings times are like off by a week that's what messes me up I can remember <laughs> UTC with no problem but then it feels like really something you always. should be able to do like speak basic French for instance it, it just feels like something that should just should just come naturally but it's yeah I mean add, adding four or adding five yeah. to a number is not really that difficult no exactly just, and I can see if you're trying to juggle like 10 time zones but Now, there's, there are many different ways to tweak Windows, and we've looked at some of the most basic. Ben, you looked some while ago, and I, I wanted, it's something that isn't available to everyone, but if you're using Windows 10 Pro, you can use this. The Group Policy Editor. Yeah, so Group Policy is it's meant as a tool for like business users hmm. to... The idea is, is that you set up on your server that controls the whole network of your business. You set up policies so that your employees can't do certain things that you don't want them to do. But if you have Windows 10 Pro... Uh, and I believe there's a workaround for Windows 10 Home. I'm not sure if that still works, but um, either way, you can set up, set up some of these uh, tweaks that change how Windows works and you can use on your own computer. Um, so for example, you can go into one panel and tell it to just disable access to the control panel. So if you don't want people on your computer poking and changing network settings or whatever, um, when they try to open the control panel, they'll just see a pop-up that says they can't do it. Um, and if they're not an administrator, they can't go in and remove the restriction that you set. So um, most of them are more useful for like blocking features. Like you can turn off, um, you can do anything you want to really turn off Windows search, turn off the command prompt, keep people from installing software, um, prevent Windows from just doing certain things like checking for updates manually or installing updates manually um, to other stuff like changing to old like balloon styles and things like that. So there's a lot there and it's, it's not super user friendly because there's a lot of different menus that look similar. So you kind of have to dig around in it. But if you're willing to get a little more advanced, there's some useful tweaks in there. If you really want to block something or change the way windows behaves by default. I think removing OneDrive can be pr quite useful in some cases. I, uh, there are other ways to disable OneDrive. I, f I find it quite frustrating that it insists on being not just being there, but also reminding you of its existence from time to time. Yeah, I, I know when Windows 10 first came out, if I remember, it was like it was so baked in that you couldn't remove it unless you like really did some surgery. But I think now you can uninstall the app and it kind of it removes. Some yeah, it's certainly that. a lot easier to keep out of the way yeah. now. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, you're right. It's still like, hey, you should save your files to OneDrive because. But you know what? what you yeah, but OneDrive isn't alone in that. I mean, if you're running Dropbox, every time you connect a device, it will ask you if you want to sync everything from that device to Dropbox. And it's like, not now, Dropbox, go away. Yeah, I mean, I those kind of features are useful in some situations, but yeah, that's it's like the there should be a name for this, like the 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 the, the phenomenon of humans using computers where. Every time there's a pop-up box, you just immediately want to close it as soon as you can. <laughs> like when I connect the when I connect the flash drive, it might be useful to back up all the pictures that are on it to one to Dropbox or whatever. But unless that's exactly why I'm connecting it, I just want to close that box so I can do what I actually want to do. You know? <laughs> yeah, totally. The thing about Windows, I think, in terms of like tweaks and things, is that it. I'm not 100% certain on this, but it, I feel as though with 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 native tools and with third-party um, accessories and add-ons and utilities, it it is the most tweakable operating system environment, desktop environment around, isn't it? Well, you use Linux all the time, and I don't, so I think you'd be better yeah, suited to I, answer I that than me. Well, I feel that maybe it, Linux is more accessible for developers and would be developers to create tools that would then tweak it. But I do feel as a Windows, certainly in more recent times, um, I think Windows has possibly got the edge on this. Okay, I would definitely defer to you. I mean, I, view, I don't use a Mac all the time. I use it enough to be familiar with it. But I, I mean, there's definitely software around that lets you tweak your Mac. 
But yeah. Apple's also locked that down with with system integrity protection in the last couple of years and the last few versions uh, of Mac OS that disabled a lot of those like deep tweaks that people used to be able to do. So, well, there's a couple of other things that Windows that you can do to Windows 10. You can we mentioned the um, the start menu and we also mentioned the desktop gadgets, but you can also revive the Aero theme from Vista and Windows 7. Yep. With um, There's various tools that do this. I'm going to pick out one called WinAero Tweaker, which basically just lets you specify particular parts of the desktop or all of the desktop to revive that old look of Windows. It was an interesting look. I quite like it. It's, it's the one where um, p parts of your desktop windows are so, sort of translucent with the, with the windows behind them. Uh, yeah, it has that like gl like glassy look. Yeah. And, um, you know, I'm looking at a list now um, that we have on Make Use Of. And everything that we've talked about today, we will um, have links for you in the show notes so you can refer to them and maybe download some of these tools. And um, there's one called Customizer God, which um, lets you change icons and many other things in windows uh, this tweak now power pack which customizes how windows 10 behaves rather than the way it looks so it might clean traces from your web browser every time you shut it down or um, compact database files from your browsers to save space uh, there's the winero tweaker as i mentioned there's there's so many of these tools that just let you tweak windows and while there is a danger of installing too many of them which will then tend to kind of collide and clash and and basically conflict and slow windows down if you find one that you really like and settle with that, with with that one and i'm looking at one now called taskbar tweaker now i've already discussed how i like to uh customize windows by moving the taskbar this is looking at this this is perfect for me and i might just go ahead and check it out because this tends to do it apparently does a whole bunch of useful things with the taskbar which is an important key element of the windows desktop it sometimes has been a little bit uh, understated over the years the windows taskbar but certainly windows 10 i uh, yeah i think it's quite important so I, i'm, yeah, I'm going to be checking uh, that out funnily enough that that's seven plus taskbar tweakers with its official name that was one of the first articles i wrote for make use of that was like my third or fourth article wow i wrote about what that can do yeah it is pretty handy i don't use it anymore because i had some issues with it i forget if it was when i was running windows 7 like there was some update that it was like every time windows had a major update the app wouldn't be updated to work with it and it would cause a bunch of problems so i just stopped using it but um, I think it's better now, but yeah, it's, it's really nice. It just has some handy, like stuff that you, there's nowhere to turn it on in windows, but it feels like it should be part of it. Like if you have multiple instances of an app open, like say you have a bunch of word documents, if you mouse over the word icon on your taskbar and then scroll your mouse wheel, it'll s skip between all the, the windows you have open for that app. Mm -hmm. Like stuff like that is just stuff you wouldn't normally think of but it's just like once you have it it's like why isn't this built into windows yeah 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 it's um as, as i say it isn't just i think i don't want to make a definitive statement on this but i think there's maybe more features built into most linux desktop um, environments that will let you tweak things than there is on windows but i think windows has a, a better I'm, I'm a wider selection not better a wider selection of them um, tweaking tools um, from third-party developers, but I could be, I'm happy to be proven completely wrong. I've spent the day using Linux today, so if I am wrong about this, I've only myself to blame, frankly. <laughs> well, that's true. There's value in how easy it is. You know, there, there might be more opportunity, but if it's hard for most people to get into, then it might not be the best option for them. Exactly, precisely. Um, so, Ben, we've we've looked at a ton of tweaks. We've looked at our favorite tweaks, and we've looked at some quite advanced tweaks, and we've looked at some standard tweaks that pretty much anyone can do, from changing the desktop to icons to moving the taskbar. Move the taskbar, people. You will never know computing bliss until you do that. So we, 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 we've covered pretty much everything, I think. So in, in which case, I think I need to press this button here. our regular listeners will know that this is our kind of summing up period before we then end the podcast uh we've, we've both talked about a few things i've been really interested in the fact that ben has these kind of tools desktop tools that he does that basically create kind of scripts and shortcuts and things and make things a lot easier is there, is there anything new that you've learned today ben new that i've learned today 
I don't know if I would say I've learned anything today, but I've thought about taking a second look at those desktop gadgets because I had those. I haven't touched those since Windows Seven. Um, and and you mentioning that you were a fan of them makes me kind of want to try them again. Mm-hmm. Um, also, scrolling through some of the articles that we used um, kind of as a base today, I, I know we've written a lot about Rain Meter, and I've never actually tried that myself. I think it's a really cool idea. It's like a really deep customization engine where you can use it to customize everything on your desktop, or yes. other people can do it, and then you download their um, their file. You know, I know that we used to have a guy that wrote about that. I always thought it looked really cool, but I'm not good at being super creative like that, like from scratch. So I'd have to look at stuff other people have come up with, but I think it's really cool that that deep of a customization tool was available. Yeah, that's definitely worth looking into. And I'll um, try and get a rain meter link into the show notes as well. So you can uh, look at some uh, more ways of using that. Um, So that brings us to the end of this week's really useful podcast we are the tech podcast for technophobes we are here to help you make computing life easier whether using a desktop computer or a mobile device or some other piece of tech maybe a a a, an amazon dot any of those things that's what we're here for and if you know anyone who would benefit from some more assistance a bit of guidance through point them in our direction we can be found anywhere you can find podcasts we are on spotify we're on amazon we're on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and all the other podcasting services. If you have any questions for Ben or myself, you can find us on Twitter. Just uh, follow the notes in the they follow the links in the show notes. Until next time, it's goodbye from me, and it's goodbye from Ben. See you later.